Welcome to another episode of Overkill, where we solve a pretty simple problem using outrageously difficult techniques, hopefully to highlight some deeper mathematics. And so today we want to find the area of a rectangle, and we're going to do that using Green's theorem. So let's just recall what Green's theorem says. It says we want to suppose that C is a simple closed curve bounding a region D in the plane. And then also not written here, but you also need to assume that P and Q have continuous partial uh, derivatives on an open region containing D. Then you have this line integral over the curve C of P dx plus Q dy is the same thing as this double integral over the region D of the partial Q with respect to X and the partial P with respect to Y. Okay, so the way that we're gonna apply Green's theorem is to first find the area of an arbitrary polygon in R2. So let's go ahead and suppose that the points X1, Y1, X2, Y2, all the way up to Xn, Yn are vertices of an arbitrary, well, it's not exactly arbitrary. We'll talk about that in just a second. Um, polygon in R2. And so the kind of picture you want to think about here is maybe this is the first point, x1, y1. And then this would be the second point here, x2, y2. And then before the x1, y1, you would have the xn, yn like that, and then here you would have maybe x3, y3, and so on and so forth. So this doesn't have to be uh, convex or anything, but it can't have any self-intersections. That's the important thing. So like I said, it doesn't have to be convex, so it can kind of boost back in there like that. And then we've got a bunch of ed edges that are connecting this, which is, let's see, four, five, six, which is x6, y6, and this guy right here. Okay, so now how exactly are we gonna find the area of this arbitrary polygon? Well, we're gonna do it by noticing that if we let P equal this polygon, we can on the one hand find the area of this polygon by taking the double integral over the polygon of just the differential area component. But, now, if we go back over here to Green's theorem, we see that just the differential area component would correspond to this partial Q, partial X, minus partial P, partial Y being equal to one. So that means if we can fiddle around with the functions P and Q, so that when you combine them together in this way with their partial derivatives, you get one, then we're good to go. And you can do this a number of different ways. And maybe the easiest way for us will be we will take um, P, we will take Q to be equal to X and P to be equal to zero. So let's go ahead and notice that if we set P equal to X, sorry, Q equal to X and P equal to zero, we're good to go because the partial of Q with respect to X is the number one. And then, well, P is already zero, so it's partial to zero as well. So that means that here, this is gonna be the same thing as the line integral over the boundary of P. So I'll put del P to mean that. But what I mean by the boundary of P are these collection of line segments. And I might as well note that they're oriented this way counterclockwise, which is a necessity, good. And then we'll have um, x dy. And so that corresponds to q being x and p being zero. Okay, great. So now what we wanna notice is we could take that boundary, maybe we'll give it a name. Maybe let's give this boundary of p a name and it's c and we can break C up into N different line segments. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll split C into C1, union C2, union C3, all the way up to union Cn. And what exactly are those? Well, so C1 will be this line seg segment from X1 to X2. C2 will be this line segment from X2 to X3. C3 will be this next one, and then Cn will be this line segment from Xn back to X1. 
So in other words, what we can say is that CI is the line segment starting at XI, YI, and then ending at XI plus one, YI plus one. Where we're using the notation that XN plus one and YN plus one is the same thing as X1, Y1. And so that allows us to loop back here. Okay, great. So now the next thing that we can do is parameterize each of these line segments. So there's a standard parameterization for a line segment that's given in the following uh, uh, formula. And so it's R of T and it'll be uh, one minus T times the starting point plus t times the ending point. And you can talk your way through that pretty easily. Notice if we plug in t equals zero, um, we're gonna have one minus zero times the start plus zero times the end, so we're at the start. And then if you plug in t equals one, this one minus t cancels and we have one times the end point, so we're at the end. So this parameterizes a line segment over the interval one, oh, sorry, zero, one. So what I'll do is I'll parameterize each of these line segments by R sub I of T. And so that's going to be given by the vector equation, one minus T times each starting point. So that'll be X I Y I and then plus T times each ending point. So that's X I plus one Y I plus one. Good. Now we can kind of mash that together into uh, a single vector equation instead of like the scalar multiple or linear combination of two vectors. So notice we'll have xi plus 1 minus xi times t and then plus xi. That's what we get from like combining everything together in the first component. And then we've got something similar for the second component. So we'll have yi plus 1 minus yi times t plus yi. And like I said before, but we're kind of running out of room, in this whole setup, we have t running on the unit interval zero to one. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll pick up from there and find that area of an arbitrary polygon in R2. So let's see where we are so far. So we've got this polygon with vertices x1, y1, x2, y2, all the way up to xn, yn. So these are vertices of an arbitrary polygon, but we assume there was no like self-intersection of any of the line segments. And then we said that the boundary of this polygon was made up of these line segments, C1, C2, all the way up to Cn, where Ci was the line segment from Xi, Yi to Xi plus one, Yi plus, plus one. And we've got that parameterized by the following vector equation. So notice it's like Xi plus one minus Xi times T plus Xi, and then something similar for the Y parts. And then we have T running on the open interval. Okay, great. And now we can use this formula that we also talked about on the last board, which is the area of this polygon will be equal to the line integral over this boundary of the polygon, which we called C. And then we have X dy. But since these line segments only share single points, this line integral over the entire boundary will be broken up into the line integrals over those line segments. So here we have, this is gonna be the same thing as the sum, i goes from one to n, and then we've got this line integral over each line segment, ci of x dy. Great. And now we need to recall that this parameterization up here gives us an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. Great, and then furthermore, we know that the DY component is actually equal to uh, DY DT DT. Great, so we don't use the Y component just exactly as is, we use essentially its derivative. Okay, great, so that's gonna allow us to take this and break it down into the sum i goes from one to n, and now we've got this integral from zero to one, and that's because we're using the definition of the line integral, we're breaking it down into just like a calculus one type integral. Now we've got x, so that's gonna be this guy right here, so x i plus one minus x i times t plus x i. 
So like I said, that's X, and then we've got dy. So dy is dy dt dt, but since that's a linear function in t, it's pretty easy to see what uh, dy dt is. It'll just be this um, y i plus one minus y i. So that's exactly what we get. So y i plus one minus y i, and then dt. Okay, fantastic. So now what we wanna notice is that this guy right here is just a constant. And then all of these xi type terms are also constants. So we're actually just integrating um, a linear function in t. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to give us this sum as i goes from 1 to n. Since this i, yi minus plus 1 minus yi is a constant, I'm going to bring that out of the integral. So that's going to be yi plus 1 minus yi. And then I can take the antiderivative of this thing. So that's going to give me 1 half xi plus 1 minus xi t squared plus xi times t. OK, good. So now we need to evaluate that from 0 to 1. OK, so let's see. When we evaluate this at 0, everything cancels because everything has a multiple of t on it. Um, and I want to point out that this right here is a plus. And then when we evaluate it at 1, let's see what we get. So we'll get half xi plus 1. So this is evaluating at t equals 1. So we'll get half xi plus 1. And then we'll have minus half xi plus an entire xi. So that'll be plus 1 half xi. OK, good. So now let's see, we can put all of this together, and now we have this sum as i goes from 1 to n of xi plus 1 plus xi, and then yi plus 1 minus yi over 2. So notice the xi plus 1 plus xi came from this term, and the yi plus 1 minus yi came from this term, and the 2 in the denominator come, came from those halves. OK, so we've got the area of this arbitrary polygon. Now, I'll bring that up here, and we'll use it to calculate the area of our rectangle. So in the last board, we arrived at the following formula for the area of a polygon in terms of the coordinates of its vertices. Now we want to apply that to find the area of our rectangle, but we need to put it into the plane in order to do that. So let's go ahead and maybe think about the origin happening right here. So that's like kind of an obvious thing to do. And then here, this will be the point L comma zero. Up here, this will be the point zero comma W. And up here, this will be the point L comma W. Great. And then maybe we'll think about this point right here as being X1, Y1. This point right here will be equal to X2, Y2. This point right here will be X3, Y3. And then finally, this point right here will be X4, y4. Great. So for us, the area of our rectangle, so I'll call it r, will be equal to this formula exactly with n equals 4. So I'm just going to rewrite that so we've got the sum i equals 1 to 4 of xi plus 1 plus xi um, times yi plus 1 minus yi all over 2. So that's that means we have four terms to calculate. So let's look at the i equals one term first. So the i equals one term will be x2 plus x1, and then y2 minus y1 all over 2. Great. And now let's look at the i equals two term. So that's going to be x3 plus x2 y3 minus y2 all over 2. And now next we need to look at the i equals 3 term. So that'll be x4 plus x3, y4 minus y3 all over 2. And then finally we have the i equals 4 term. So that'll be x, well, it looks like x5, but remember that's back to x1. So it'll be x1 plus x4, and then y1 minus y4 all over 2. OK, now we're all set. 
So let's calculate each of these. So notice that y2 minus y1 is zero because those lie on the same horizontal line. So that means this thing right here is zero because we have zero minus zero in the y component. And then likewise, this guy right here is also zero because y4 and y3 are the same. Here we have w minus w in that component which that just leaves us the rest of these parts. So let's see what we get for each of those. So we're here we have x3 plus x2. So x3 plus x2, that'll be 2L right here. And then y3 minus y2, so that'll be W. Great, and then let's look over here. We have x1 plus x4, so that's gonna be zero plus zero, but that's just equal to zero as well. So we end up with two times L times W over two, so that's clearly equal to L times W, which is exactly what we would obviously expect it to be because it's just the area of a rectangle, for goodness sake. Okay, so that's a good place to stop.